Hi friends! In previous videos, we have analyzed a lot of voltage regulator circuits for a variety of purposes. Today I will show you three simple direct current regulator circuits. They are universal and can be used in many self-made constructions. The current regulator is not much different from the voltage regulators. Unlike the voltage regulator, it maintains a stable output current, regardless of the input voltage and output load. Let's consider a pair of stabilizer and one controller of general application. The stabilizer of current is an integral part of any normal laboratory power supply or charger. It is designed to limit the current supply to the load. Note is an important point. In all three variants, shunts are used as a current sensor. Shunt essentially is a low resistance resistor. To increase the output current of any of the mentioned circuits, it will be necessary to decrease the shunt resistance experimentally. By the way, links to all printed circuit boards will be found in the description. An important part of any electronic project is a printed circuit board. If you order them on the GLCPCB website, you will get an ultra-low price starting from $2 for 10 pieces and free delivery for the first order. Upload your Gerber file, select the desired options and that's all. Boards are manufactured in the shortest time in any quantity and you don't have to worry for the quality. GLCPCB is a huge factory with a lot of experience in its business. Link to the site, as always, is in the description under the video. The desired current value is set manually, usually by rotating the variable resistor. All three options that we will consider today operate in linear mode. Hence, the power element, the transistor, will be heated at high loads and needs to be cooled. I will try to explain the principle of the operation of circuits in the simplest possible way. Let's begin. The first circuit is characterized by the maximum simplicity and availability of components. There are only two transistors. One of them is the control transistor, the second is the power transistor and the main current flows through it. A wire resistor with low value is used as the current sensor. When the output load is connected to this resistor, some voltage drop occurs. The more powerful the load is, the greater the fall will be. This voltage drop is enough to trigger the control transistor. The larger drop will cause the transistor open more. Resistor R1 sets the bias voltage for the power transistor. Due to it, the main transistor is in the open state. Current limitation is due to the fact that the voltage on the base of the power transistor that was formed by the resistor R1 closes to the power mass through the open transition of a low power transistor. This power transistor will be closed, hence the current flowing through it decreases to a full zero. Resistor R1 is essentially an ordinary voltage divider. With it, you can adjust how much the control transistor is open, and consequently, it is possible to control a power transistor by limiting the current flowing through it. The switching current of this circuit can be increased by additional power transistors connected in parallel. So, as the characteristics of even identical transistors will differ, resistors are added to the emitter circuit. They are designed to equalize the currents through the transistors, so they will be evenly loaded. The second scheme is based on an operational amplifier. I repeatedly used it in the chargers for a car battery. This circuit is a current stabilizer. As in the first circuit, there is also a current sensor or a shunt. The operational amplifier records the voltage drop on this shunt, all according to the already familiar way. The operational amplifier compares the voltage across the shunt with the reference, which is set by the Zinier diode. Through variable resistor, we artificially change the reference voltage. The operational amplifier will try to balance the voltage at the inputs by changing the output voltage. The output of the operational amplifier controls a powerful field effect transistor. That is, the principle of operation just a little differs from the first circuit, except that there is a reference voltage source, namely the Zinier diode. This circuit also operates in linear mode, and the power transistor will be heated at high loads, and it needs a radiator. By the way, bipolar transistors are possible here. The latter scheme is based on the popular integrated microcircuit of the LM317 stabilizer. This is a linear voltage regulator, but it is possible to use the microcircuit as a current stabilizer. 
The desired current sets by a variable resistor. The disadvantage of the circuit is that the main current flows through the mentioned resistor and naturally it must be very powerful. It is desirable to use wire resistors. The maximum acceptable current for the microchip LM317 is 1.5 amperes. You can increase it with an additional power transistor. In this case, the chip will already be in control mode, so it will not heat up. Instead, the transistor will heat up. That's all for today. If the video was useful, don't forget to rate it and share it with your friends in social webs. Don't forget to subscribe to my group in Facebook. The link is under the description. Now I have to say goodbye. Until new meetings, have a nice day. With you was Kaysian TV.